first glance, the website for Help Save the Endangered Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus from Extinction seems like a credible website. The first thing that you notice about this site is it is very professional looking. It was created in a way to capture the reader's attention and it has been organized in a way that is easy to navigate. The different tabs located under the title allow you to choose what topic you would like to explore and be taken directly to the information. One thing that I noticed right on this page is the photograph of the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus. I can see why students visiting this site might believe that this animal really exists. They have a picture as proof. However, the students would have to use some of the knowledge they already possess about the octopus, such as where it lives and how it breathes, in order to realize that this animal is fictitious. There are also maps and places to show your support on this site, which you would find on other websites. Another reason why students may believe this site to be credible is that it has the different tabs with various topics. The Frequently Asked Questions tab offers questions and answer, answers all about the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus. I can see how reading these questions could be confusing. While the first few questions seem relevant enough, the reader would have to continue on to see that the questions and answers begin to become absurd. Sasquatch is a fictitious character, but it is talked about in the Q&A. It also asks how you can donate money to the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus. The response is to give it directly to the tree octopus. The students should realize that this is not something they would actually be done, and it should cause them to question the validity of the site. The sightings tab alone would be enough to convince my second graders that this animal actually does exist. Seeing the photos and letters from people would give them the proof that they need to argue their case. However, as they continue through this part of the site, they will notice how the pictures begin to change. This picture looks like a blue stuffed animal stuck up in a tree, while this one looks just like a plastic toy. The dates on the signs begin in 2002 and end with 2009. The fact that no new posts have been made since January of 2009 should also cause the students to question the validity. There is not any current information. The media tab might also be cause confusion for the students. Seeing all the links that supposedly contain information about the tree octopus would make the students believe that it must exist if all these different books and videos contain information about it. However, the students would actually have to click on these links to realize that they do not actually talk about the tree octopus. For example, this link right here says that in this book, it contains a tree octopus named Octavio. When you click on the link, no mention of a tree octopus is actually found in this review. If the students were not able to realize that this is not a valid website by visiting the other four tabs, surely after visiting the activities tab, they will be able to realize this. It tells you how you can help the tree octopus get their favorite Halloween treats of candy corn and shrimp. This is obviously fictitious. After conducting this evaluation, I can see why so many students have difficulty deciding which websites to use when they conduct their research. Most students probably do not take the time to actually evaluate the information on the site, but instead make their decision based on how the site looks. This website is a great example. By looking at the site, you see various pictures, maps, and links. However, you must examine these things more closely in order to see that the information is not true. In the course DVD, A Teacher's Perspective, Evaluating Information Online, Beth Phillips discusses the ABCs of evaluating a website. These are author, bias, content, dates, and editor. At the bottom of the site, you can see that the creator is Lyle Zapato, and the site was created in 1998. It was not created in connection with any educational institution or reference source of any kind. She also talks about looking about the web address. .org, .gov, and .edu are all valid sites to use when researching information. This one is .net. This is not on the list of valid sites and can be owned by anybody. David Warlick in the DVD Information Literacy Evaluating Information offers the trick of URL backtracking. You're supposed to delete to the first forward slash in order to gain access to the parent page. When we do so for this site, we are brought to Zapato Productions Intradimensional. By looking at this site, you can see that this is not really a valid website to be giving information on any type of animal. So if the students conduct this little experiment, it should help them establish the validity of a website.